Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So a few years ago on one of my Facebook Lives, I showed everyone how to make this fun leather triple wrap bracelet. It's been sitting in the archives for a few years and so I thought it's time to bring it back out again. So I've updated a little bit. I think you guys are going to really love this one. So if you want to see what I'm making, come and join me. Okay, so our parts today are going to include some of this five millimeter leather that we have. I also have some four millimeter fire polish. I have some small 18 gauge jump rings and a toggle and some little tiny ribbon ends. We're also going to be using some 24 gauge uh, silver craft wire. And for tools, we're going to be using a pair of bent chain nose pliers, a pair of pliers, some cutters, and we're going to need a ruler and of course I don't have one right now so I'm just going to use an old tape measure that I have kicking around. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our wrist measurement and then you're going to take that measurement and you're going to times it by three. So if we have a seven inch wrist we're going to multiply that by three and that will give us 21 inches. Then you're going to take approximately one inch off of that and that is the size of the leather that you're going to cut. So we're going on a seven inch wrist for our sample today. So the piece of leather that I have is 20 inches long. Our end pieces that we add on add about an inch and a quarter and that little bit of extra, that quarter inch is what you want to have for a little bit of slack in your uh, bracelet. Okay, so if you decide that you're going to buy one of our kits, you're going to get nine of the four millimeter fire polish. So we do want to try to distribute those evenly amongst our leather. Now I have 20 inches of leather here. So if I take 20 and divide it by nine, I get about two and a quarter. So we're gonna measure about every two and a quarter inches and that's where we're gonna place our beads. If that is off a little bit, don't worry about it. It's going around your wrist three times. Nobody's ever gonna be able to tell. I just like to try to space them out a little bit, but it's completely your bracelet. You can stagger these however you want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut myself about eight inches of wire. And we're gonna use a healthy amount of wire. I'm gonna have a little bit left over, but it's always easier to do these sort of things with a little bit more wire than a little bit less wire. And you'll get plenty of wire in your kit to complete this bracelet. So now I'm gonna measure over approximately two and a quarter inches. And like I said, this does not have to be exact. I just kinda of like to you know, have a little bit of a roadmap when I'm making things. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna place just a little bit under my thumb. Your thumbs are generally fairly strong, so that should be easy enough for most people. Now don't worry about this first little bit because we are gonna be trimming it off. So now I always like to work towards me like this. I find it easier than working away. So I'm gonna bring it around and underneath. So I'll try to get my thumb out of the way so that you can actually see that. So now I'm gonna bring it around again and you can see I'm actually pulling fairly tightly. And I'm also running my fingers down to straighten out that wire because the wire can get bent really easily. So I sort of straighten it out with my fingers. So I wanna have three nice, neat, tight wraps on there. So now you can see that those are really nice and neat. And if you have one that's a little bit off there, you can kind of just mold that down a bit. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is meant to be a bit of an organic look, but you know, I have a hard time with organic. <laughs> I just try to make everything look so perfect. Okay, so now we have three nice wraps and we're not gonna worry about that one right now. So now I'm gonna place on one of my beads and I'm gonna center that in the middle of my leather. So I'd just like to place it right in between. I know that's kind of a dark bead on a dark piece of leather and it might be a little hard to see, but I'm just placing it right in the center there. Now I'm gonna bring my wire around and now I'm gonna start embellishing the outside of my bead. So I bring it around one time from underneath and now I'm gonna go around the bead. So I just bring it all the way around and I bring it all the way around again. And now you can see that's kind of locked in there. And we're gonna do that one more time, just for a little extra. And now it has, adds that little extra bit on there that I love so much. So now we're gonna be working away from us. And I did say earlier that I like to work up, you know, towards me, but the way that this turns out, there really isn't another way of doing it. You have to bring it down to lock that back in, otherwise it's gonna come apart. So now I'm gonna go three more times. So there's once and twice. And I'm pulling fairly tight. You can see it's sort of shaking a little bit 
because I like to be nice and neat and orderly when I do this. And again, this should be a little bit organic looking, but if you're worried about it not looking the way you want, you can just kind of tuck things in. So that's kind of the look that we're going for. Now I'm gonna bring this and turn it over and I'm gonna trim it so that I've got about a quarter of an inch of wire there. And I'm gonna bring that down. Just kind of, you can push it down with your hand if that's easier. And then you're just gonna take the end of that wire and you're gonna sort of burnish it down with your plier. Now you, you wanna be careful that you're not wrecking the wire on the other side or damaging your leather. So I'm really just using the tip of my tool to push that in there and then you can't feel any sharp edges. So now on this one, we're going to bring it back because I don't wanna add an extra loop in there. And I'm gonna trim that off. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna take the very end of my tool and just sort of push that down. Now you could try and take it and tuck it underneath that wire, but I find that really um, hard to do. So I just take the end of my plier and kind of burnish it down. So there's the back and there's the front. So you can see on the side, we've got that nice little embellished wire around our bead and it just kind of locks it in there. So now I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm going to cut another piece of wire about eight inches long. And when you're cutting it, if you do buy a kit, try to be fairly exact on the eight inches because you want to make sure that you do have enough. I'm just going to kind of straighten that out a little bit. And now I'm going to measure two and a quarter inches over. So I start from here. So I'm going to go from there and we're gonna go about two and a quarter inches. And then I'm gonna start with my wire again. So just put a little bit under my thumb. And you can see I'm not trying to be exact with that two and a quarter, it's just sort of a guideline. And I'm gonna wrap nice and tight once, twice. And I'm straightening that wire out as I'm bringing it around, just so that it makes it look a little nicer. And now I'm gonna put my bead on. And I'm going to center that in the middle of that leather. And then I'm going to bring that around towards me. And now I'm going to wrap it around. So when I bring it around, I'm pulling it fairly tight so that it's nice and neat. And I'm going low on the wire. I'm not up around the bead. I'm going fairly low. If you go up high on the bead, it's just going to pop off. So there we go. So there's our three times. Now I'm going to bring that around to the back and I'm gonna wrap it three times. And if it starts to get a little bit um, bent on you, just sort of bring it back and straighten it out with your fingers. You don't wanna use wire straighteners too much because it can make this wire fairly brittle by doing that. But if it's really bad and it, you got a huge kink in it, go ahead and use some wire straighteners. So now we're gonna cut it off, leaving about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna take the end of my pliers and just kind of burnish that down. And I do wanna actually push right on the end of that wire, just to make sure that it stays there and that it's also burnished down. Now, the other thing is if it comes apart like that and you don't like that look, just push it together. Just don't go on top and push down because it'll flatten out the wire too much and that's not a very nice look. So now we have to go back and pull this one back. This one has to sort of stay a little bit longer when we're first working with it, just because it gives us something to hold on to. It's really hard to hold on to the very, very tip of wire. So, so I'm gonna pull that sort of tight because I could see it was pushing back just a little bit. So I'm gonna trim that a bit more. So I'm pulling it a bit tight. There we go. And then burnish that down. There we go. So that's exactly the look that we want. So I'll do one more and then I'm going to carry on with the rest and then show you how to finish this up. So another eight inches of wire. And you can see when it comes off the spool that it's not always completely straight. I am, these are just put on by machine and you know they don't always come off as nice as we'd like. So we can just straighten it with our fingers. It's very soft and malleable. So I'm gonna go to my two and a quarter, lock that in with my thumb there, pull around, there's once, twice, three times. I tend to work in odd numbers versus uh, even. It, I always just think it looks a little nicer. And now we'll place on our bead and make, pull that really nice and snug. And then go around 
your wire. See, I always forget to do it. So it's a good thing I may, almost made a mistake there. <laughs> I always want to start wrapping right around the leather. So you got to remember to go around your bead three times and then come back down and lock that in there. So now I'm going to wrap around my three times. And don't worry if one side's got three and one side's got four because again, nobody's ever going to be that close to your jewelry and nobody's ever going to say, well, you got three on there and four on there. Like it doesn't make sense. Um, so just kind of do whatever makes you happy. So pull that nice and snug and give that a trim. And you can take the end if you want and sort of pull it. That might be easier to make sure that's in there nice and snug. And then I'm going to take this one and I want these sides to match. And this one looks like it, it could go around. We've got lots of, lots of wire on this one. And again, I know I keep repeating myself saying that this is organic and it really is. It's not meant to be completely perfect in that every single wrap looks the same, that you've got the exact same amount. Just go with whatever works. That, you'll find that you'll be a lot less stressed out when you're making jewelry if you do that. So there we go. Just going to kind of push that over with my fingers. So now you can see this is what we've got started here. We've got about every two and a quarter inches. We've got our little wraps and they're locked in there nicely and I think that looks really sweet. So I'm just going to finish this up and then I'm going to come back and show you how to complete this bracelet. Okay, so I'm on my last one. So I'm just going to bring it around and start doing my wraps. So I get my nice three wraps there and then do my final wraps around. Now on this one, I didn't, I actually ended up using seven of my beads. I probably didn't measure right because you know, measuring is just not my strong suit. So if you want to make sure that you use all of the beads that you've got in your kit, come up with a formula that works for you for um, adding on your beads. I just didn't want to, I could put one right here because that's actually more than two inches there, but um, I just didn't want to put an extra one down there. So again, don't worry about it being perfect. You can also put these in little groupings, like you could do one, two, three, you know, you can do whatever you want. So this is just to sh simply show you a technique um, and you can kind of run with it. So I'm just tightening up these last little ones and then burnishing them down. And there we go. Now we've got these all on there spaced nicely. And I think that looks really, really good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these little ribbon ends and we're just going to place them on the end. Now these do not need to be glued, but if you are a little bit worried about it, you could place a little bit of GS Hypo on there or some E6000 and then give this a crimp down. So I'm just going to take my pliers and I just have to make sure that's nice and straight. It was a little bit crooked. So now I'm just going to come on top and I'm just going to give that a squish on either side. Now these have little tiny teeth that are probably impossible to see on camera but that's what grabs in to the leather. And I've never had one come off before, but I also make sure that I'm squeezing really tight. I'm not going to squeeze up here because I don't want to damage the structure of the piece. I'm just bringing my uh, pliers about that far down. So make sure that you're giving it lots of good squishes. So I'm going to repeat on the other side, place that on there and then push it down and then just make sure before you start tightening up that it is straight and just go back and forth and get those nice and straight and tightly on there. There we go. Now, If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I like to use multiple jump rings when I'm adding my ends. I use one on the round end and I use three on the bar end. I find if you only add one, it doesn't give you enough room to get up inside of that toggle. So that's why we're going to um, be using the different amounts today. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up one of my little jump rings. And these are four millimeter and they're 18 gauge. So they're really nice and heavy and strong, which is what I like. And they're super small, which is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to run that through the end and then put my round end of my toggle on. And now I find I have to turn my bent chain nose over and kind of get a grip. There's not a lot of room in there, but I just kind of wiggle it back and forth until it's nice and tight. And now on the other end, I'm going to add three. So I'm going to open this up, just go opposite movements like that and add that in there and then tighten that up. Whoops. And these are really, they're really strong. So sometimes your 
pliers will go flying. Now, sometimes people say to me, well, why don't you just add this one? Well, the way that these um, jump rings come, they're not fully closed, so I can't do that. It doesn't uh, do up uh, properly. So I might as well just you know, undo it and make it look nice and tight. And now for our final one, we're gonna open that up. I'm gonna run it through the last jump ring and then through the bar, turn your pliers over and then just kind of jiggle that until it um, slips right in there. Okay, so here's the three completed pieces. This one is in a really dark gray leather and it has that gorgeous oil slick uh, fire polish that I love to work with so much. This one is in the black and it has this beautiful sort of purple opal -y kind of luster color. It's just fabulous and I know we have so many people that love purple so I figured I better do one of those for you. And then on my wrist, of course, I have my favorite combination of the brown and the turquoise. I've always been a fan of that combination. And you can see that they're not meant to line up across from each other. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. You could slip this one in between if it bugs you that they're, you know, matching across. So it doesn't really, it's not meant to go in any particular pattern. It just is a cute little um, leather wrap bracelet. And I just love how these ones are. And they're super comfortable to wear. Now in this kit, we do not include any charms, but this one would look really, really nice with a little charm hanging off of it. So if you happen to have a charm, you could add that on there. So we do carry this one and tons of other charms in uh, the website. So you can always just pop on that section if you wanted to add a charm. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's really fun to make, super quick, super easy. Anybody can throw this one together in no time at all. It would also make a really great gift for somebody. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I do love to hear from everybody and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I want to thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.